morning, we give a special welcome to Pastor Susan Hartman from the Farmersville United Church of Christ and to Greg Schell from Slifers Presbyterian Church, who will be leading today's service. Today's offering will go towards the work of the Farmersville Ministerium, especially our Community Vacation Bible School, which will be taking place June 7th through 9th at the park. More information is or will be in your congregation's bulletins and newsletters. Please let your pastor or congregational leaders know if any of your family members or neighbors will be participating this year. We will not be passing the plates during the service due to ongoing COVID safety recommendations, so you are invited to place your offering in either one of the plates at the back of the sanctuary. We also wish to thank all of you for your ongoing support of the ministerium in the past year and a half and our community's individual congregations as we have all been struggling to adapt to the realities of the pandemic and as we continue to face challenges related to the ongoing recurrence of the coronavirus. We ask for your continued prayers for our pastors and congregational leaders as we continue to work together and in our congregations to navigate the present situation. God willing, we look forward to gathering together once more for our community worship service at the Firehouse on Sunday, August 1st at 10 o'clock a.m. More information will be following in the next couple of months. At this time, let us begin with prayer. O Lord, our Maker, Redeemer, and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We ask you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word we may be taught daily to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen.
Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. He is risen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Now let's pray together. O oh God, you, you gave, gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you deliver us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that you may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, the 25th chapter, beginning at the 6th verse. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Here ends the first reading. <clears throat> Our second reading is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through 28. Hear his word. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pit before them all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the death comes also through man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. <clears throat> but each in his own turn Christ, the first fruits then, when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come. Then he hands over the kingdom to God, the Father, and after he has destroyed all domain, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemy, enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that it does not include God himself. Who but everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him. Who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. This ends our second reading.
You may be seated. The word of the Lord from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, beginning in verse 1. The Bible says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Can I read that? I have to get situated up here. Let us pray. God of grace, we have come here today in this early hour to hear the story of Easter. We ask that you would open our hearts, that we might hear your truth anew. And then, Lord, be with us on our journey that leads to life and hope. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, words are a very powerful thing. And I say that because words can change a person's life and words can change the course of history. This morning, I would like for us to take just a few moments and consider how the three words, he is risen, have changed human history. And let us also consider how these three words have changed your history and my history as well. Now, I'm going to start with just a touch of trivia, something that I know you are so excited to hear at 6.30 in the morning. And especially since there are only a few of you here, you're going to have to participate, okay? It'll be all right. The ceiling tiles aren't going to fall down or anything like that. Now, here we go. What I'm going to do is to share a short phrase with you. And I want you to just holler out who it was that said those words, okay? The first one is ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Who said that? JFK, very good, John F. Kennedy, thank you. The next one, see, wasn't that easy? And you haven't even had enough coffee to get you going for today. Here's the second one. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. Martin Luther King, very good. You guys are on the ball this morning. The last one, I can hear you. The rest of the world hears you. And the people who knocked these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Anybody? I can hear you. The rest of the world hears you. And the people who knocked these buildings down will hear all of us soon. That was George W. Bush. But you did good. Two out of three at 6.30 in the morning. Excellent job. Thank you. He is risen. They were just a few words, but they were memorable. And why? 
because of the circumstances that surrounded them and because of the impact that they had. Three words spoken over 2,000 years ago to less than a handful of people at a cemetery outside of Jerusalem changed the course of human history forever. With those few words, your history, my history has been changed. And I believe that we cannot overstate the impact of those three words today. The Bible says it was a Sabbath morn. Women who had been followers of Jesus went to the cemetery outside of Jerusalem. They went to the place where they had seen Jesus' body laid to rest in a tomb three days earlier. A very large stone had been rolled in front of that tomb, and as added security, some accounts tell us that Roman soldiers had been placed there to keep guard so that no one rolled that stone away or stole the body of Jesus. Friday night passed without incident, as did Saturday and Saturday night. But some accounts tell us that early on Sunday morning, as the sun began to rise, as it's doing now, the earth began to shake, and an angel came down from heaven and rolled the stone away. Can you imagine how those poor women felt? They had gone there for the simple purpose of completing the burial process. But upon arrival, they received some very unexpected news. He is risen. Now, we know that one doesn't go to the cemetery to see if the person is still there. We go because we know that body was laid into a casket. The casket was sealed and closed. It was placed into a vault. The vault was lowered in the ground and the dirt is piled upon it. We know that person is still there. So this contradicted everything that those poor women ever knew or experienced. And usually this is where a person's history ends. And yet Jesus' story continued after his death. He has died, but now he lives. Absolutely amazing, incredible news. News it was not only for those there that morning, but news of an event that changes all of history. And that history includes yours and mine. Now, there was also another event that drastically changed the course of human history. And it takes us back to the very beginning of time. God had created a world intending that it would be a place that reflected his glory and where everything and everyone would live and work together in peace and in harmony. God made two human beings from which every human being has come, with the intent that these two folks and everybody after them would live with God forever in this glorious place. But as we know, those two people decided that in some way God was withholding good from them. And when they chose to disobey God in that split second, that single incident, history was changed the perfect world and relationship between God and his children had been ruined. Like smudgy little fingerprints left on a once clean window, sin now leaves its dirty fingerprints on every aspect of our lives. You and I can see those fingerprints in the jealousy and in the greed that continually compares what we've been given to what someone else has. We see these prints in broken relationships and promises that have left lives shattered and hearts broken. 
We see these prints in our bodies as rogue cells or disrupted DNA that cause disease and suffering. We see these smudgy little prints throughout the history of our world, one group oppressing another. School shootings, abused and neglected children and war and violence and all of the ugliness that we could name today. Oh, we try real hard sometimes to clean up those prints, but it's kind of like trying to clean a window with your bare hands. Instead of helping, you just leave more smudges and more fingerprints. Well, God wanted to change history. And God knew that there was only one way to do that. God was going to have to intervene, and that is exactly what God did. God entered human history through his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Born as a human, just like us, but lived a life always glorifying God. Jesus obeyed and loved and trusted God at all times. And just before he died, Jesus suffered the worst part of sin. The part that you and I cannot see or experience in this life, which is the eternal death of hell. Jesus suffered the separation from a holy God that each one of us deserves to face at the end of this earthly life. Jesus did that to change your history. He did that to change my history. And you see, it's not like Tiger Woods winning the Masters, which some say was the absolute greatest comeback in all of history. Because when Tiger won, he got the money and the recognition. I didn't get a thing. Did you? His comeback didn't change my life. Jesus, on the other hand, didn't come to make history, but rather he came to change it. The perfect life that Jesus lived and sacrificed was not to work his way into the record books. He did it for you. He did it for me. Your history. The story of your life that is covered in dirty, smudgy little fingerprints has now been rewritten by Jesus. Your past is rewritten. It is forgiven, and the story of your life now has a brand new ending. It is now the same as it was for those poor ladies at the tomb, because for those who believe in Jesus Christ, death is now immediately followed by a life that is free from every fingerprint of sin there ever was. Life as God intended it to be. You see, Jesus didn't pick something small and simple to help us to trust him. He picked the hardest thing. He picked something that no one else has ever been able to do, the only thing, the one and only thing, that God alone can do, and that is to come back from the dead. Jesus placed his entire credibility on that one thing. Those three little words, he is risen, not only mean that what Jesus promised he has done, but they also mean that whatever Jesus has promised, he will do for you. He is risen. This is our proof of God's forgiveness and faithfulness that he has promised to all who believe. Not only will God help us through our problems, but God will also use them to draw us closer to himself. And God will use them for our good and for the good of others. Please know today that forgiveness is not dependent upon our history. 
but rather it is dependent only upon Jesus. When our life comes to an end, our loved ones are going to stand beside our grave. And just like those women on Easter morning, they will know that our death has been followed by life eternal, just as Jesus promised. Oh, the audience was small, but the impact of those three little words spoken by the angel were felt throughout all of history. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah, Hallelujah and amen. I invite you as you're able now at this time to stand. Let us unite with the church in all times and places, confessing our faith in the triune God as we read together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Thank you. As mentioned earlier, our offering this morning will go towards the work of the ministerium. Please feel free to, pr to place your offering in either one of the plates at the back of the sanctuary. Christ is risen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for the power revealed in the resurrection, for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Lord, in your mercy. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Lord, in your mercy. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused. Those who are sick or suffering. Those who are dying and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Could all stand for the benediction and the... I noticed being up here you can see the sunrise starting. If you want to turn and look, it's uh, a beginning of a new day. And as we celebrate Easter. May the celebration of the resurrected life bring new hope to your being. May the victory over earthly death turn your eyes to the promises of heaven. May the empty tomb help you to leave your sorrows at the foot of the cross and so that God's hope, promises, and forgiveness reign in your life forever. Amen. May we finish with our final hymn, Thine is the Glory. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now go in peace, serve the Lord. Please be seated until dismissed.